I'm going to show you three keys to optimizing your studio monitor setup so that you can get the best sound possible. The first steps to optimizing your studio monitors are room setup and studio monitor placement. The acoustics of your room affect the sound at your ears, so it's just as important to optimize the acoustics within the space as it is to invest in high quality studio monitors. If you can follow these simple guidelines, you'll set yourself up for success and save yourself a ton of frustration later on. Most of us are working in a relatively small rectangular bedroom studio space. I'd recommend placing your studio monitors along one of the short walls of your room so that the longest walls are to your left and right. Ideally, the space will be symmetrical from side to side so that the stereo image from your speakers will be balanced and accurate. The general rule for setting up a pair of studio monitors is to place the speakers so that there's an equilateral triangle between the listening position and the speakers. In other words, the distance from the listening position to each speaker should be equal to the distance between the speakers. The size of the triangle will be determined by the space in your room and the speakers you're using. Each set of studio monitors is capable of producing sound up to a certain level. If you're working with particularly powerful speakers then, they can be placed further from the listening position, while weaker speakers will need to be placed closer to you. In a small room, a pair of near field studio monitors will probably be within two to four feet from the listening position, but this can vary. In my room, I've placed the studio monitors as close to the front wall as possible with the listening position about three eighths of the way into the room. This is not 100% necessary, but it's based on the resonant frequency between the front and back of the room. You can learn more about this concept in my video on room modes. Once you've got the right spacing between your speakers and your listening position, make sure that the speakers are pointing directly at the listening position. On the horizontal plane, this can be achieved by turning the speakers inward by 30 degrees. To align the speakers on the vertical plane though, you may need to utilize studio monitor stands. The goal here is to ensure that the listening position is on axis to the high frequency drivers in your studio monitors. That's because the high frequencies are more directional than low frequencies. If the speakers aren't pointed at the listening position, it may sound dark or dull. I'm currently using these studio monitor floor stands with a pair of Isoacoustics ISO 200 isolation stands. Isoacoustics sent me a few sets of ISO stands for my monitors and has sponsored this video to support the channel and to help you understand their products better. I'll get to the main reasons why I use these later in the video. It has to do with the way they isolate the speakers from the stands or the desk. But another reason they're useful is to position the speakers vertically. The ISO series stands come in a kit that allows for short, tall, and even angled configurations. Right now I'm using them in short mode, but if you're placing your studio monitors directly on your desk with no stands, you can use them in tall mode to get the speaker up to the right height. Then you can tune the alignment with the angled configurations so that the high frequency drivers are pointed upward or downward toward your ears. The cabling between your audio interface and studio monitors is pretty simple, but it will depend on the specific studio monitors and interface you're using. My interface has quarter inch TRS outputs, while my studio monitors have XLR inputs. So I'll need a quarter inch to XLR adapter cable. TRS and XLR are basically the same, just a different shape. They're both capable of facilitating a balanced connection between an audio interface and a pair of studio monitors. Just make sure that you use a TRS cable with a tip ring and sleeve, and not just a TS cable with only a tip and a sleeve. You'll just need to choose whichever cable or adapter that's needed to connect the output of your interface to the input of your studio monitors. Most audio interfaces have a specific pair of outputs dedicated to connecting to studio monitors. These are often labeled as the monitor outputs. This pair of outputs will be controlled by the monitor knob on your interface. Many studio monitors are powered by an internal amplifier. This is the case with my monitors, so I'll connect them to power with the included power cable. The next step is to tune your system to sound as accurate as possible. In addition to the positioning guidelines we've already followed, there are a few more tactics for optimizing the performance of your system. That brings me to the main reason why I use the Isoacoustics ISO stands, to isolate the monitors from the stands or the desk that they're standing on. If I didn't use these isolation stands, vibration from my studio monitors would be transferred into the stands and then into the floor. 
If you place your studio monitors directly on a desk, the desk will vibrate and resonate with your studio monitors. In either case, these vibrations and resonances will affect the overall frequency balance within the room. Isoacoustics has various options for different studio monitors and speakers. You can find a link in the description below to the Isoacoustics product calculator that will recommend the best solution based on your specific speakers. Thanks to Isoacoustics for sponsoring this video. The frequency response of your speakers and room acoustics will both have a large impact on the sound quality of your system. The sound from the speakers will reflect off of the desk, off of the walls, and off of the ceiling, and these reflections create acoustical interactions that impact the sound quality at the listening position. To counteract this, it's helpful to use acoustic absorption panels along the walls and ceiling. I'd recommend prioritizing acoustic treatment in the first reflection points within your room. The points along the side walls and ceiling where the sound travels its shortest indirect pathway from the speaker to the listening position. These points can be easily identified by sliding a mirror along the wall until you can see the studio monitor from the listening position. The thicker the panel, the better. Consider investing in panels that are at least four inches thick so that they're effective across more frequencies, rather than just being effective at the higher frequencies. Thin panels may have the effect of dulling the sound in the room by absorbing high frequencies disproportionately to low frequencies. As a final touch, you can utilize corrective EQ or system correction software like Sonarworks. This is the last step though, because while these solutions may be capable of solving some frequency related problems, they're not capable of solving all of them. And they're very limited in their ability to solve time related problems with reverb and resonance within the room. Now that we've covered the basics, let's take a look at how we can optimize your room for recording and mixing. Go ahead and click the video that's on your screen now, and I'll see you over there.